Good evening again, boys and girls. Tonight is our third and final section of the skeletal system. We've discussed the functions of it, the structures of it, and tonight we'll discuss the skeletal joints found inside of it. So our topics tonight include ligaments, which are connective tissues found at the joints, immovable joints, and finally, movable joints. Here's our chart for our notes for the joints, and we've broken up into two sections. We have a section for immovable joints, and we have a section for movable joints. Remember, skeletal joints are areas where two bones meet, such as your knee or your elbow, and many other places inside of the body. The first joints we're going to talk about are the immovable joints. There is only one type of immovable joint inside of the body, and that's called a fixed joint. Now, a fixed joint means these are joints that have little or no movement. So two examples where you would find fixed joints in your body include the skull and the pelvis. So let's go visit our good friend Steve the skeleton. He'll be more than happy to help us out with this. Now here's Steve the skeleton smiling big at you and we're just going to examine the skull. Now as you can see in the skull of your face where your cheekbones are you can see cracks in them or, or what are called fissures in the skull. All right, these are places where bones are meeting. So this is one example of a fixed joint in the skull. However, if you take a look at the profile, you'll see there's a plate in the front of the head that makes up the top portion of the head. You'll see there's another plate that makes up the back portion of the head that runs all the way to the temple area. And you'll see there's a smaller plate right above the ear. If we continue to rotate Steve the skeleton around, you'll see the back of the head is also made up of another plate. So there's another plate at the bottom of the skull with the two plates that we talked about before. All these joints in the skull are called fixed joints because these joints show no movement whatsoever. They're just places where bones meet, which is the definition of a joint. So that's a fixed joint. Now that's it for our immovable joints. There's only one type that there is. So we're going to move on to the movable joints. Now movable joints are joints that allow movement throughout the body. So these joints allow us to carry out all different types of motions that we need throughout our everyday lives. So for the first joint we're going to talk about, it's called a pivot joint. Okay, a pivot joint is one bone that rotates in a ring of another bone that doesn't move. You can find pivot joints in a couple of places. You can find them in your neck, which allows your, your skull to pivot left to right and also in your forearm. So let's take a look at a pivot joint in your forearm. So here we have the forearm of the body. Now your forearm is composed of two bones, the ulna bone and you have the radius bone. Now the radius bone is what allows your forearm to twist. So if you were to do a thumbs up and then rotate your arm to make a thumbs down, it's the radius bone that'll spin inside this little ring over here that connects to the humerus. So that's an example of a pivot joint. You get that spinning motion in the bone. The next type of joint we're going to discuss is called a ball and socket joint. A ball and socket joint is where a bone has a rounded end that fits into a cup-like cavity. So the rounded end would be the ball, and then the cup-like cavity would be the socket. And there are two places where we have ball and socket joints. We have ball and socket joints in our shoulders and in our hips. So if we go visit Steve again, and we scroll up to his shoulder, we take a look and see here's the humerus bone, which is the top part of our arm, and the rounded end of the humerus bone connects into our shoulder blade, which is called the scapula. And if you take a closer look, you'll notice that there's a cup-like indentation in the scapula, and that's where your rounded end of the humerus fits into. Now, this joint allows us a wide range of motion. It's a lot like the joysticks on video game controllers. You can move your arms left and right, up and down, and all around. Now, this joint allows us a wide range of motion, which allows us to do a bunch of different things, such as throw a softball, or maybe reach into the freezer to grab that gallon of ice cream that you've been wanting all day long. So this is your ball and socket joint. Now, the third type of movable joint we have is called a hinge joint. And the hinge joint is a joint that has a back and forth like motion, which is similar to how a door moves. 
Doors are attached to things called hinges, which allows the doors to open and to close. So this type of joint will allow body parts to extend and bend. And there's a few places where you'll find a hinge joint. You can find them in your elbows. You can find them in your knees. You can also find them in your fingers. And you can find them in your jaw. So if we scroll down a little bit on Steve here, Now if you take a look at the ulna bone here, you'll notice that the ulna bone has a groove at the top of it which allows the bottom of the humerus to sit into it. If you ever take a look at a door hinge, that's how the hinges are built. So this allows the arm to move up and down. That's how your knees work, that's how your fingertips work, and that's how your jaw works as well. So that's why we're able to do things like chew food and grab things and even just walk. Our last joint that we have is called a gliding joint. A gliding joint occurs when one part of a bone slides over another part of the bone. You can find gliding joints in your spine, your ankles, and your wrist. So if you go back to Steve one last time. So here's the spine and each bone here is called a vertebrae. And between each vertebrae, as we said in the last section we talked about, are thick, slippery tissues called cartilage. This cartilage here allows for the bones to move without irritating and grinding down on the bone below it or above it. So our spinal column has a limited movement. We can go back a little bit, we can go side to side a little bit, but mostly our spinal column allows us to bend forward and then bend back. However, your more popular or famous examples of gliding joints include the wrists. So if we take a look at the wrists here, you'll notice that the wrist is made up of multiple bones. And to get that range of motion inside of your wrist, these bones have to slide on top of one another to enable movement in the wrist area. And your ankles have this type of setup too. So let's just watch an animation to recap on the different types of joints we talked about tonight. Most of the joints in the body are movable joints. Movable joints include hinge, ball and socket, pivot, saddle, and gliding joints. An example of a hinge joint is found in the elbow. It allows you to move your forearm forward and backward like a hinged door. Saddle joints are found at the base of each thumb. They allow you to rotate your thumbs and help you grasp objects with your hand. Gliding joints allow bones to slide over one another. The joints between the small bones of your foot, which allow your foot to flex when you walk, are gliding joints. The top two vertebrae of your spine form a pivot joint. This joint allows you to turn your head from side to side, such as when shaking your head no. A ball and socket joint, such as the hip joint, enables you to move your leg up, down, forward, and backward, as well as to rotate it in a complete circle. Now the last topic we're going to talk about tonight is going to be about the materials that keep our bones together. So skeletal joints are kept together by tough bands of tissue called ligaments. If you take a look at the skeleton in the bottom left corner, look at its shoulder. You'll notice that there are brown materials covering the top of the shoulder where the top of the humerus enters the scapula or the shoulder blade. That's your ball and socket joint, remember. And because of the range of motion it has, that joint needs to be held together by several ligaments. And here they are. If you take a look at the picture to the right, we have a picture of the knee joint. So the top bone again is the femur. The bottom bone again is the tibia. The pink materials is cartilage that we talked about last night. And then that small bone in the front, the round bone, is your patella or your kneecap. Now your ligaments are the white tough bands that keep the bones together. Now, if we didn't have ligaments inside of our bodies, our bones would be fairly loose and we wouldn't have very much stability. Now, that concludes tonight's lesson, boys and girls. Thank you very much. Fox out!